Hey everybody, Sarah checking back in with you in regards to Sprout Social. There have been a lot of changes when it comes to the platform itself since I last recorded this. So I'm gonna be popping in to show you all of the changes that Sprout Social has made to its dashboard and software. For those of you who are watching this video and thinking, well, what the hell is Sprout Social? I don't know. Well, let me tell you, Sprout Social is a wonderful social media marketing piece of software that you can use on any device, including mobile devices. It also has great expansive capabilities on your desktop. I really love Sprout Social. All you have to do is make sure you have an internet browser that works and log into Sprout Social. With Sprout Social, you can look at in-depth analytics when it comes to every single one of your social media accounts, as well as pull reports on a, and brand those reports to you and send those off to your partners that you've been working with. Or if you're a small business, send it off to the business owner or send it off to the rest of your team so that you guys can understand where you, everything's working and where everything isn't working. There's also a really fun capability on Sprout Social called Viral Sprout Queue. The queue itself analyzes every single one of your profiles and posts its tweets, Instagram posts, and all of your Facebook posts and pins and Google and LinkedIn, all at the most opportune time possible. And what I mean by opportune time, when you're going to have the most eyeballs on your profile at any point in time. You, all you have to do is queue in your content and put it into the viral queue and away it goes on a perfectly set timer. You can even manage the number of times that you're posting every single day. You can also set up RSS feeds on Twitter and so many other things that we will get into when I go and do our tutorial. So sit back, relax, take some notes and enjoy this really great in-depth Sprout Social tutorial. We are going to jump right into it and I'm going to show you around the actual first page that you're going to land on. On the left hand side you're going to have all of your main menu options and then over along the right hand side you'll see you have some more quick access options. Things that you're more than likely going to be using out the gate. Uh, you cannot customize that quite yet but that is going to be a feature coming up in the next year or so. So let's start with the dashboard. On the dashboard side, you can see that you have a list of to-dos, any kind of messages that are scheduled out for the day, and then a quick glance at your daily engagements from a group perspective. Um, you also have access to any kind of support you need on the home page, and then at the very bottom you'll see you'll have some more quick access, typically used features and different settings that you can adjust on your Sprout Social. There's also going to be an area where you can explore more features, which we'll dive into in a little bit. But most importantly, let's talk about messages, your publishing feed, and then everything else going on first. So let's jump into messages. This is where you can set up what's called a smart inbox. The smart inbox is a really great thing you can utilize this part to look at all of the messages coming in on your Twitter profiles, your Instagrams, your Facebook accounts, and whatever kind of social media accounts you have connected. For this example profile, we have Twitter accounts and Instagram and, and Facebook that are connected. This is where you'll see not only things related to your brand directly or sent to your brand on social channels, but you'll also see that you can look at everything from a very specific kind of mindset. Here you'll see you can select if you just want to look at people who have mentioned you on Twitter or have sent you a direct message or retweeted your content, retweeted with a comment. There's, you can get down to a very granular level um, between all of the different platforms that you have connected to your actual Sprout Social. This is a really great thing because you don't necessarily have to go directly log into your Twitter account or to Facebook or Instagram because you have all of your engagement and messaging located right here inside your Sprout Social account. Now, if you wanted to save a message and say, I'm gonna come back to this later and repost it and share it along with my friends, on my Instagram account, you can do that. It's really easy to repost and reshare content from Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. There's also a task section. So this task section 
is where you'll see um, tasks that are maybe assigned to you or tasks that you assign to different people. Um, but if you are someone who is going to have a team, then you'll need to upgrade your account. But if it's just you, you won't really use that section. So now let's jump, jump right into um, your feeds. This is where you are going to see everything coming through on your timeline as it relates to Twitter only. The Twitter feed is a really fantastic way to kind of engage with content coming through your feed without having to go directly to Twitter. This is something that I really, really love about Sprout Social. I don't ever have to leave it and go directly to the platform. I can just do it all from here. And depending on the number of accounts that I have and for, let's say, if I am someone who's running a business and I have five different clients, I can do all of my engagement and checking in on conversations through Sprout Social. And I don't have to log in and log out of a ton of different accounts. Next, we're going to talk about the Instagram hashtags. This is where you can add hashtags and it will create an Instagram feed that you can jump into and follow. You can repost content from here. You can, oh, that hashtag did not like it. Um, with that said, if you are using a hashtag that has fewer than 100 different posts attached to it, it's not going to pull into the Instagram hashtag. So if you have a brand new uh, brand related hashtag that has like barely any posts attached to it, wait till you have a few hundred posts generated through that hashtag and then add it into the hashtag monitoring section on Sprout Social. You can add as many as you would like um, according to each singular Instagram profile and then you can monitor any kind of Instagram post that comes through with that hashtag. You can do this on Instagram as well so if you feel that you want to really dive into how uh, granular of a level you're monitoring hashtags, Sprout Social is really the way to go about it because then it's not mixed in with the rest of the posts coming through on Instagram's app. Next we have um, an RSS feeder. This is a really easy way to start curating and pulling together content that is related to the brands that you have set up. So we have just one brand folder set up in this Sprout Social, but you can set up as many as you want according to however many you need to do. Um, you can set up this RSS feeder through Feedly.com. And once you have your Feedly and everything set up for that client, you'll just connect it to Sprout Social, and then it'll pull all of the content into the RSS feed reader. Um, you can publish content directly from the RSS feeder. That's what we're doing here. Um, I'll dive into how to do a message and everything in just a short little bit of time. But I want to show you this RSS feeder really quick first so that you can begin thinking of ways to connect an RSS feeder um, through Feedly onto your Sprout Social and make finding content for your Twitter account or your Facebook page or whatever um, significantly easier than just literally searching through all of Google or Twitter feeds and everything because um, that tends to be a very messy place. Um, so yeah, you can click on read more at times, um, and it'll open up the entire article for you. But most of the time, I will say that you will have to click on read more on this website or read more, however it's worded. Um, and then it will take you to that website. Again, this is still a lot easier to, to utilize um, in comparison to doing a Google search. Next, we're going to talk about publishing. This is the section that we're going to spend a lot more time on. So if we are wanting to kind of look through the options that we have here, you'll see that we have um, a lot of options. There's calendar, sprout queue, drafts, needs approval, rejected, find content, Instagram notifications, post via RSS, um, failed posts, lots of different things going on within the publishing section. We'll come back to this and I'll walk you through this a little bit more intensely later. Uh, listening is a specialized Twitter feature that you can take advantage of um, depending on the kind of account that you have. This is a great tool to kind of dive into those branded hashtags that you are using with your brand to understand how many people are using it and the kinds of conversations that they are having around that hashtag. 
Here is an example. This is um, Espresso. This is the kind of listening that Sprout Social uses as an example, but you can literally look at all of the hashtags related to different hashtags, related keywords, um, the positive versus negative, and then demographics. Like there's so much information that you can take advantage of that will help better inform the demographic that you target with your different posts and with your different kinds of um, ads that you might run later on. Next is the reporting section. There are tons of different kinds of reports that you can take advantage of and share with your clients or with yourself. Um, there are engagement reports that you can select. Right now you're not seeing any because I don't have any profiles selected. Um, you can connect your ad accounts and you, from there you can monitor all of the paid promotions that you're doing. Um, you can't create any paid promotions in there. In the Twitter section, you can look at all the Twitter profile information you want. Everything from engagement to publishing behavior to messages received, messages sent, um, kind of looking at what kind of posts are being published. Are you, do you have more videos, more photos? Which days are your video content being um, engaged with more? And then you can also look at your top posts from different Twitter accounts. Um, here you can see that I have the top three posts. You can view even more posts and measure their performance. You can also look at the different kinds of impressions that you have and then the types of engagement that you're getting. Now on Twitter, there are certain ways that you can engage um, depending on the data that you receive. There's also Twitter competitors. So you can add a Twitter account that you want to measure your success against. So I'll show you how to do that really quick. We're going to use FinCon, who isn't really a competitor of um, Plutus or Plutus Awards, and Plutus Awards isn't a competitor of FinCon. They are just similar types of content, Twitter accounts that are used across the, the feed. Um, then we'll get out of that. Um, and then you can click on adding another competitor if you would like as well. You, there is no limit to the number of competitors that you can have. Um, so you can feel free to add a ton of different ones in there. I recommend using three or five. Um, then you can also do some reporting on your keyword volume that you are utilizing as well. Next is our Facebook page data reporting. Here in the Facebook pages, you can still review a lot of different um, data points similar to what Facebook Insights offers now, but um, this is a much more compacted, easy to read way to grab that information in comparison to Facebook Insights. Uh, one thing that I really love about the reporting tools on Sprout Social is that you can export into a PDF all of the, like let's say, published posts that we have here if you're with a team or if you want your client to see the different kinds of posts that you have, if you have any A-B tests that are going on, um, and you can help your, your client um, understand you know, what is working and what isn't working. And you won't have to screenshot anything from Facebook or, or whatever. Um, you can also do Facebook competitors. Facebook has this feature in their insights tool, but it's not gonna give you as much information as you will receive within Sprout Social. So you can look at the different kinds of audience growth on a much more granular level and um, the types of messages that are being sent out between these profiles and then the stats based on the page. So like if you have a competitor and your client is really worried about how much more engagement they might be getting, this is a great way to say, well, actually they're not getting more public engagement, we are, and we're sending out more content than they are. Next, we'll dive into Instagram reports. This is a really key feature for those influencers who are utilizing Instagram. This is a fantastic report that you can export to, let's say, um, a, a brand that you're doing a, a partnership with. And you can say, like, here are all the posts that I did with your hashtag, or here are all the posts that I did um, with the content that you sent me. Here's the engagement level, uh, how many people were reached per post as well as the number of likes and comments and saves. All of this information you can export and brand with your logo and then send to your direct 
influencer connection. Um, you can also do Instagram competitors, and we'll type in FinCon again just for the sake of consistency so that you can kind of see how this works. And again, just like with Twitter and with Facebook, you can review each of these different profiles and the kinds of growth that they're each experiencing, their top posts, etc. Um, and then there below that is what is called an advocacy report, but that is a, a paid feature that I don't really use. Um, if you want to add your logo to reports, you just click on customize branding and upload it there. Next, if you are a business who has a product or service and you want to review the different kinds, I'm just going to change the date range here. If you want to review um, any of the reviews that have been posted on your social channels, you can look at that here. It's a really great way to incorporate that data. So you can connect to Google My Business, TripAdvisor, YouTube, LinkedIn, all those other kinds of platforms too. Next, let's go back to publishing. This is where we're going to spend the majority of our time because this is the biggest value of Sprout Social. Auto posting for all platforms and everything is just so easy to use. Um, so let's go into the calendar report. Here you can view by list, week, or month. I prefer to look in um, a week format because then it tells me you know, throughout the rest of each day and calendar, you know, what, what piece is published and where and how many posts per day I have for that platform um, or for that, that business and everything. Um, you can look at your queued messages, scheduled messages, anything you have drafted, your sent stuff, um, and if you were working in a team, things that need approval and what day that they're supposed to be scheduled for so that you can stay on time with publishing that feature. Um, if you go to um, list view, this is where you'll see literally a list of all of the content you have for every day. It'll be sectioned off um, day by day. You can also do, um, you know, reporting of how many posts and what posts you have scheduled. So if someone says, I want to see everything that we have scheduled for the next two weeks, you can export that. Um, next, if you want to view anything that is coming through those tags that we set up, um, in one of the other sections during this tutorial, then you can do that. You can also create a note. So let's say we want to put in a report and a reminder about a certain piece of content that we need to publish on a specific day. We can put that note in there and we can set it to a specific day. Um, and this is something that is viewable by everyone who's connected to the Sprout Social account that you've created. Um, so again, if you're working with a team, um, you can put that out and everyone will see it and it'll see it according to the day that you recorded it. And then again, this is just quick access stuff. Uh, you can hit compose. You can also hit publishing. The little out out menu that you want to you want to do um, so we'll go into the sprout queue you can look at profile by profile to see what you have in the queue drafts anything that you have drafted so here we have some messages that we are saving for another point in time um, as well as stuff that we pulled from our RSS feeder that we pulled into drafts so that we could customize the, the text a little bit more um, if there's something that needs approval it'll pull into this section here anything that got rejected. Um, so like posts from Twitter that might have been a duplicate will go into the reject pile. Um, and if you're looking for content um, and you wanna find something via any one specific subject matter, you can click find content. And similar to how the RSS feed works, you can pull content from here and compose it into a message. Uh, there are tons of different genres that you can pull from. So let's say we want to look at stuff that has to do with entrepreneurship and finance. Uh, we can pull those feeds into the find content feed and kind of scroll through and find something that we like. Next, Instagram notifications. This is where you'll see notifications of a post that failed or things that sent or were shared to a network. Post via RSS. This is where I, I love this feature. This helps me 
cool <laughs> new content for Twitter and stay on top of stuff. So if we want to take um, an article or a business who posts something very regularly, like at least once a day, we can take their URL and pull it into, uh, let's fix this really quick, and pull it into this feature here and then put in some prefix text that just like probably tags this person or saying a little thing like we love so-and-so and check out their new article. And you can have your RSS feed reader check for new posts every single hour, um, as well as every four hours, 12 hours, 24 hours, really great. And then you can select which profile that is gonna come from. You can set up a max of five RSS feed readers. So if you wanna have things come from the same URL to three different kinds of profiles, this is where you're going to do it. And here you can see this is where all of our failed posts are going to pull into. And it'll tell you, usually it will tell you what the posting issue was. And if you want to re-queue it or try to resend it, then um, you can just hit edit, review the post to make sure everything looks okay, and then add it back into your queue. And then I usually try to go to my queue and double check to make sure that it was sent in there. Um, and I'm just going to delete it because it, it doesn't need to be sent. Um, anyway, back to failed. So I'm going to show you how to um, create a post with a really cool thing called the Sprout Q plugin. Um, you can see I have this extension installed here on my Chrome and I am just going to show you really quickly how you can create a post. Um, this is really great. What I like to do is I pull up a ton of different links into one Chrome browser, and then I just go through and schedule every single thing. And I just add it to my queue, um, which I then will check after I'm done queuing up all of my posts. Um, and I'll show you here, at, let's say I want to highlight this content here and I want to share it. So what I'll do is copy that, highlight that. And if you are using the Sprout Q publisher extension for a Twitter account, um, it will automatically populate the post with the content that you have highlighted um, based on, you know, when you plug, when you click on the plugin. Um, then I tag my Twitter profile make sure it all looks well formatted, hit Q, and then I just move on to the next one. Scroll down, look at all of the content, and then I'll pull, and again, you can go through and, and select something from every single post that you want. Um, something I usually do is I'll kind of briefly listen to the, like a podcast, um, and I'll pull a quote from it, and then I'll schedule it and queue it up as well. So let's say I want to take this podcast and share it on all my profiles instead of just one profile. So then what I'll do is I'll take that link after I've pasted the content, shorten the link, and then we're just gonna go through and reformat this so this looks nice and clean as well as tag everyone involved with the post. Something that you need to make sure that you're doing when it comes to your prof or to queuing content is you're pulling the correct usernames for every single account that you're sharing from. If you tag the wrong person, it can make you look a little unprofessional or a little lazy, and that's not something that you want. So go to Twitter, search for the blog that you are looking to publish from, and take their Twitter username and bring it into the um, the queue that you are getting ready for your profile. Um, then next, what I'll do is I'll do the same thing. Um, I'll I'll kind of reformat and get rid of some of the text, shorten it up a little bit. Um, then I'm going to look for this person's website that she has, Brandon Renfro, and I'm going to see where his Twitter account is. And if I can't find it, then again, I'm going to go take the time to search out where he is. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in his name. 
and hopefully see if I can if something will pull up if it doesn't then um, you know I'll, I'll continue to try <laughs> a few minutes if I can't find anything uh, so we're gonna we'll just type his full name as opposed to what I think his username might be and there he is perfect I'm gonna hit follow I'm gonna pull his Twitter name and I'm going to replace his name in this section here with his Twitter profile name. Then do a final check to make sure everything looks good. And once I have confirmed with myself that everything looks great, I'm going to queue. But if you're using this tool inside of Sprout Social, you can hit queue and duplicate. And what I'll do is I'll send this out to literally every single profile I have um, within the queue. One thing I want to mention about the queue that I haven't really dived into a little bit is the value of, of the queue. So what is the, the Sprout Social queue? The Sprout Social queue is a wonderful tool where you can just publish content into and Sprout Social, according to all of the data it has available to it, as in it the tool, will determine the day and time that it is most beneficial to send out a tweet or a Facebook post or an Instagram post. And to do that, I set it up through the Sprout Social Viral Queue. Um, the Sprout Social Viral Queue is uh, one that you can customize. You can say, I want to send four tweets a day between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and all of the tweets that you create will fall within that time slot, um, allowing you and your profile to get the best reach humanly possible with every single post you have. Um, it's a really wonderful tool and it saves so much time. I use the Sprout Queue for basically every piece of content unless it needs to be published immediately um, just because it might be an announcement or we're going live on Facebook in 10 minutes, something like that. Um, you can also edit the thumbnails within all of the, the links, which is what I'm, I'm doing here. I don't like how this one looks. Um, and this is, a, this is a tip for your blog and the website that you create. Make sure that the metadata you set up on each page and each post is going to create a well designed image on every single URL that you have. Um, so this, I'm just tagging and re-tagging um, the Facebook profiles for the people that are involved in this post. Um, you can also put in tags for this so that your post is pulled into people who are um, interested in that type of content. Um, you can also tag your physical location here and it will pull it up for you. You can see that if you type in just kind of the first few letters of your state or your general location, it'll pull up a different, a bunch of different cities and, and townships and you can click on the one where you are located in. Um, then there is also audience targeting. This is, this is where it gets more in depth and something that you know I'll briefly show you guys today um, so again, we're going to go for personal finance based subject matter. So I'm going to find the personal finance targeting option. Great. This is a tool that you should use if you're looking to have a very specific piece of content targeted to specific people. I want to share this content with people who or a specific gender, let's say I want to do it with a with a male or and I want their age range to be from 27 to uh, 65 or 53. And I want to target people who will only speak English, like English is listed as their primary language type on Facebook. This will then show this piece of content only to people according to the targeting that I have set up. If you want to add emojis, you can do that and change the skin tone, and then it'll change the skin tone to whatever color you want the emoji to be, whether that's super pale or super dark. 
and then let's say we're good to go with this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out of that attached link and then I'm actually going to set this to go out over the course of a couple of different days. So let's set it up to go out for today the 19th and then again on the 9th of May, 28th of May. Um, you can schedule the, any piece of content six months out from the date that you are on. Um, so like if you're, if today is April 19th, so if I am want to share um, something for the next six months because it's super evergreen, then I will do that. And I'll schedule it out over the course of a couple of months. So that way I can have this piece shared over and over and over again and tag you see how it's a, it's in bold over on the right hand side um, I can tag those people and this post will automatically tag both of those people in this post every time it publishes and if I don't want to have to figure out what time I want everything to get scheduled out at I can use optimal times which again is pulled from that viral queue setting um, that I have enabled on this Sprout Social profile and then for the sake of brevity, you know, we'll just go ahead and get it all queued up and everything. Uh, let's say I don't want to post this many times. I'm going to delete all these times and I'm just going to go for the most recent. And part of that is because this piece of content is not evergreen. It specifically relates to the stimulus package for families, which is something that is very timely. Okay, then I'm going to go and I'm going to select the next profile. Um, between Facebook pages, unlike Twitter, it does not automatically re-tag the profiles. So I have to reselect a new optimal time because it's a different profile. And then I'm going to have to go in and select um, the next, or re-tag all of the, the people involved in the post. Um, so let's say I'm going to be done with this post. I don't need to schedule out any more profiles. I can hit schedule and new and it'll pull up a brand new clean slate for me to begin scheduling content from. I can also change the position of this um, little publishing post, new post screen. I can move it around. Um, I can look at the queue. I like scheduling it with this because if I have a ton of content that I'm scheduling up, I like to make sure that I am using um, the sidebar and can see what posts are coming through on the queue um, as I am scheduling out some of this content. Um, other than that, we've got some notifications here and again issues. Those are all the, the posts that might be coming through that have um, problems or haven't been properly um, shared and whatnot. Um, next is the settings. This is the, the last little bit that we go through. Um, this is where you're going to access your general settings for Sprout Social. Um, and when you click on settings of Word, everything that was at the very bottom on the dashboard page is on this page. You can set the time format that you want to read from, how many miles from distance, the first day of the week. Um, if you want to enable remembering the last profile to um, populate when you're sending content or getting content scheduled. And this is where you're going to set your viral post queue um, so you see I've got all of my uh, profiles already set to go. I'll show you how to do this really quick with Instagram. I'm going to select, uh, you can, I'm going to do it for weekdays, weekends. This is the easiest way to set it up. You can do it by individual day. So um, this is where you can get more, more granular and we'll go into more detail in a, in a different video later on. Um, I have my profile set up to individual day here. I can change this if I'd like to, to be whatever I want it to be. If I want to send 10 pieces of content out on Twitter every single day, according to viral view, you can do that. Maybe on Fridays, you want to send out 10 pieces of content a day. Maybe on Thursdays, you want to do two, whatever your heart desires. We'll go back to the settings again and I'll Kind of show you how to set up user profiles. So on the right hand side, the plus sign underneath the uh, quick select section, you can add a profile there. But here you can add a profile um, as well and change all of the settings for every single option or publishing 
tool that you want to use um, on your Sprout Social account. Um, most of the settings allow you to apply that setting to profiles across your entire account. And if you have multiple clients set up in your Sprout Social, having them sectioned out into folders will help you set things up properly. So make sure you are adjusting all of that. Uh, this is VIP list. So these are our profiles and, and people that you can keep tabs on way more than everyone else that you have set up within a feed um, or people that you're watching within uh, your follower list. And I'm just setting up a couple examples for you on, on how to add it. You can't auto-populate select like with Twitter on Instagram. Um, that's just how it, Facebook has set up its API. So you have to manually type in those accounts. So make sure you are following the rules for how to set up every single little thing that has to do with Facebook or Instagram because there are very specific rules you have to follow. Next, this is just a team setting. And then your reporting setting. Uh, you can add custom hours um, of when profile data is um, targeted or um, business hours for your profiles and everything. Um, and then you can set the time zone there and save. And then it'll show you here if you have business hours set up for one profile. Um, and then it'll tell you what the business hours are for all the other profiles that you have if you want those all to be different. You can also share this with a friend and get money for sharing it with all your all your people. Um, very easy. You don't have to join an affiliate program or anything. It's it's a really great, simple way to get people to sign up for Sprout Social and earn a couple bucks towards paying for the platform itself. If you like using keyboard shortcuts, you can find the setting tool under um, Utilities and Goodies, and then your Twitter follower tools here. You can find people that um, are following you and you can add them as a follower or you can send a message to them or hide them. You can also look at everyone who um, you have spoken with on Twitter that you are following or not following. Um, and then you can choose to follow them or not. And then people who have mentioned you in a post, you can choose to follow them. Um, and do all that. There's also a really great option to um, do some cleanup with Twitter on here too. So if there are like ghost profiles or people who are just like not following you back at all, you can unfollow them. Um, people who are silent accounts are, is, is a big one. People who are just not using Twitter, you can remove them as a follower. Um, there are benefits to doing that, but again, this this is an Instagram course, not a Twitter course, so we're not going to worry about that too much. But just in case you want to utilize this tool um, for Twitter, that is where you can find it. And then when all is said and done, um, I like to end on my dashboard page and just review everything that I have said. Thanks so much for watching this Sprout Social tutorial. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to me. Now, I, in the video, I did mention that Sprout Social is $99, but it comes with a 30-day free trial. And you don't have to submit or set up payment in order to do this free trial. All you have to do is click the link below and away you go to starting your new 30-day trial with Sprout Social. I highly recommend using Sprout Social, even though it's more expensive than things like Buffer or Hootsuite or Later. My favorite thing about Sprout Social is the fact that you can collect so much information and it's going to provide so much value to your business and to your brand partners. Making sure that you have well presented documentation of the analytics and results of a campaign is invaluable in itself. Again, if you have any questions about Sprout Social, hit us up in the Facebook group or we can go into depth on it with our one-on-one -on -one call or you can set up a separate time where we can go to in together about Sprout Social.